Well, good morning, everybody. This is Phil from Desperado 2. Over there, we have Wisteria Island. It's an undeveloped island off, just off of Key West here. A lot of people live there in tents, believe it or not. Right beside it is Sunset Key, multi, multi-million dollar homes. And uh, there's just a very narrow channel between the two islands. Um, you know, very, very rich houses to... Um, uh, the island itself was built by the uh, U.S. government. Uh, basically, it was... Uh, the dredging of this area that built it. Uh, so people yeah, live there for free and generally the, we've met some of the people, nice people. Um, back home we even took out on the game of home one night, so <laughs> not our thing. So what I wanted to go over today very quickly was um, our chart plotter and once again our old tablets. We first started boating. This boat only came with the wind. Uh, didn't come with wind instruments. It came with depth, and it came with uh, knots, like your, your boat speed, your hull speed. So we were on a budget. Didn't quite know where we wanted to go. So I found these tablets with built-in GPS. They're hundred dollars each. In fact, I've seen them down at Walmart for eighty bucks each. We put Navionics on them, and lo and behold, we had a chart plotter. 11-inch uh, screen, which was nice. A little hard to read in the sun sometimes, but boy, did it do the job. We'd be up in the North Channel, completely out of cell phone service, and this thing told us exactly where we are. We navigated most of the North Channel, all of Perry Sound area, um, you know, even the, the South Channel, which is a really tricky area sometimes to be in. Just did it with this, and it was very accurate. So when we did get, eventually buy a chart plotter, which was the next year, um, I wanted a way to mount it so I could read both. This has been really handy um, because going through some difficult parts of the ICW or even in Bahamas, like the Devil's Backbone, which they strongly suggest you get, have a pilot with local knowledge to take you through. I just had both these running side by side and basically it, it got us through. We didn't need a pilot. So I made up this board temporarily and it's become sort of permanent because I could not find anything on the market that would mount everything the way I wanted. So, um, under here we just have Velcro, and then I can also just, if I'm not using this, I can throw my phone on there or, you know, whatever else. It's just, it's just a handy area to, to put stuff on. And of course this is mounted in permanently, and it's just basically, I, I've got some, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, um, it's PVC, um, I found it at a, a, a supply store and just made this thing. It's super solid, actually, it does good. So one day I'll, I'll do something a little bit better, but for now. Anyway, there's our chart plotter. It's a 942XS from Garmin. I don't even think they have this model anymore. So you can pick them up brand new cheap for like $100,000. They do have the same model, but it's just now with a faster uh, chip in it. Uh, I like it. It's been good for us. So at first when I got it, there's a learning curve. And boy, I, I didn't like it. So I kept using this all the time. Now, I you run the boat with this pretty much exclusively, and I just use these for remote monitoring this because this is built in Wi Fi. So, down below, we just connect these things to it, and we can monitor and even change uh, things uh, using these units downstairs. Now, we're not a huge boat, so you know, it's not like we need remote stations, but in the middle of the night, you know, you want to know if your anchor's dragging or what the wind is, it's nice to have um, that unit downstairs. So this unit here, it controls our autopilot, our radar, it's our chart plotter, and it's our kind of our, it's our wind station. So we, this is the autopilot control head, and it's just brand new, we put that in uh, last year like a year old, but we never really use that because it relays all the information up to here in the autopilot screen. So that's why I'm saying this is sort of everything. So um, it's also our wind instruments, so we can look at our wind instruments here. And you know, winds out of the east northeast. Right now it's uh, um, 13.6, but it's been up to as high as uh, 16 this morning. There's a graph to show that the wind has been building this morning. You see the graph is slowly moving up. Also gives us how the wind is clocking, you know, it's changing direction slightly, you can see. And also apparent wind angle and everything else you need for sailing. Now, the nice thing about this um, is our autopilot can also um, 
adjust our boat's position based on the wind, so always keep your sails full. So particularly when we're close hauled, we may want to, our boat sails about 30 degrees. So we can set it for like 33 degrees, and if we have to leave the helm for a minute, I can just set it to hold the boat by wind, and the autopilot will just keep the boat 33 degrees off the wind, or whatever you set it to. And uh, yeah, keeps your sails full, so you're not gonna backwind or anything like that. So, one of the nice things about this unit that I like, and I know a lot of them have these features now, and there's, much, there's better units, but we really like this unit, is the charts. Now, the charts that came with it, um, all of North America and Bahamas come with them, like, fantastic. <laughs> you know, you don't need to buy separate chips. In fact, we ran into one boat that was in Bahamas and didn't have the chips for his chart plotter, and they were like, oh, there must be a computer store here. Well, trust me, you're not gonna find a computer store or a, a chandlery in Bimini that's gonna carry charts for your chart plotter. I ended up selling him one of these units. I said, hey, take it back to your boat for the night, play with it. If you want it, you know, you can buy it from me because at that point I had like six of them. I bought a bunch of spares. So this is the chart. Um, this is what a chart looks like. The pink line, I was just uh, plotting a route uh, to Bimini because we're gonna be heading to Bimini in a few days. So that's gonna be the route I'm gonna take. So that was a route I was uh, working on this morning. And you know, I'll probably, it's easy to adjust too. So, you know, I could just pick any point on the line. I can add a turn, um, add a turn, whoops. <laughs> so I'll pick a line on the route, then I can add turn. Um, and then it'll just add a turn into that route. I can shift it and then finish it so now it's you know so it's, it's really great especially if you're doing like long runs in the ICW I'll sit here for half an hour in the morning and do the whole day and just you still got to keep an eye out you can't leave the helm right but um, that's really handy anyway stop panning let's go back here let's go back to the chart the nice thing is it has built-in active captain if you don't know what active captain is I'll quickly just run through it um, Active Captain is a user sort of driven information system. So you, I can add to it, you can add to it too, anybody can add to it. So, uh, you know, uh, these ones here, these are marinas. So you can click here and I can hit review. This is Key West Bike Marina, it's called. Uh, if I hit review of it, see this little button review there. It, I can obviously gives me some information. So it's called Key West by Marina. I can find out more about his marine services, just letting me know that discharging is prohibited. You can't dump your holding tank here. All right, and it's part of an ecological reserve. Now, all of these have more information behind them. So Key West by Marina, here we go. So there's about 33 pages here from people have put in. Some people have complaints, some people are good, but it does tell us that you can get, um, you know, Marina, you can get fuel, repairs. There's the phone number if you want to call them. It'll give you the website. So very, very handy information, uh, even prices. So, you know, you can figure out where you're going. So it's really handy. Another nice thing uh, I really like is the information that other users put in regarding anchorages. So if you see a little anchorage here, boom, click on your anchorage, again, hit review. Again, this is the, the anchorage we're calling it Fleming Key Cut, discharging prohibited, all that, right? But if I hit Fleming Key Cut, there's 20 pages with people saying, you know, it's okay, it's rocky, not great holding, uh, yes, there's cell phone si signals, uh, there's a vet hospital here. Some people will, some people with dogs want to tell you where you can take your dogs. Uh, your dinghy dock is $6.50 a day or $29 a week. So all this information is in here. Now this, you know, this is the U.S. so it's great. But it's also there for all those remote areas. So we'll scan out, we'll scan way out here. <laughs> going out for a bit so there's the tip of Florida and here we go here to let's go into the Abacos oh wow I, could, I can't wait to get back to the Abacos I absolutely love that area so here you go here so here we are in the like these are islands little islands out there and you know once again these people have anchored here in seven feet of water and Baker's Bay North and again you can look at it seven different pages of people reviewing it. So I write reviews for ones that I think need reviews, but if there's already good information there, I don't bother. 
I'm updating all the time. Sorry about the scanning. The nice thing about the Garmin 2 is, uh, well, of course, we got radar. So there's your radar. Well, let's see if I can see if I can get rid of the scanning here. Maybe I can today. So the radar allows us to see these are boats that are all around us. These red ones. This, of course, is land. So we have a Garmin HD radar, works quite nicely. This red area here, that's my alarm zone. So if a boat enters there when we're moving, the alarm will go off. It's nice to know, especially when you're um, uh, when you're planning it, uh, when you're cruising at night. And there's a lot of different options to the radar. So you've got radar options here. There's your guard zone. If I turn that guard zone off, boom, so now the guard zone's off. So the alarm won't keep going off. The boats are in the area. There's also all kinds of filters to remove waves, to remove rain, or to view rain. Uh, and there are dozens of different screens to play from. Now, one thing I really like about the Garmin is uh, flipping through all these screens seems like a pain in the butt, but you can create your own screens. So my favorite screen, the one I made up, is called, I call it Combo 6, because it was my sixth attempt at making a screen, and here it is. So I love this screen. Why? Well, it gives me my chart. This is the course I've got plotted. The nice thing also is it controls my autopilot. So this line down here is my autopilot. This is my rudder sensor. Uh, right now we're in standby. Uh, this icon here, if I push that, it will hold the wind position that I'm in. So let's say I was 90 degrees off the wind, boom. And then my autopilot will hold the boat 90 degrees off the wind. If I'm just motoring down the ICW where you generally don't have your sails up, I hit the pink. And this, this, this one here, it will follow the line. So it'll follow the line and it will make all the turns. Again, don't go downstairs, you're still going to trust that this button here just holds the current head. So there, I've got all my autopilot information on the same screen as, and I can control it, turn it off on the same screen as my charts, which still also has all this active captain data on it, uh, of marinas and places to go, and, and cautionary, like if you see sometimes it'll be cautionary, or hey, there's a lot of, a lot of shoaling, so there's like a little cautionary You know, and sometimes it'll say, hey, the light's out, or, or there's other times it'll say, you know, you can dock here, or, you know, there's a guy that's real nasty and will play loud music if you anchor in front of his house. Um, this green line, this green ring, that's our anchor alarm. You, uh, let's see if I can get rid of this. The, the scanning problem is um, uh, the phone. It, it's actually my phone doing it. It's not the screen. Um, and I... But this is, we've been here three weeks now, so you can see this is the area we've been spinning in. Uh, this, these dotted lines, uh, this is your trail. Right? And the green ring we put in, and if our boat drifts out of that area, then we know our anchor has dragged. Okay, so, you know, it's nice to have. We have alarm goes off, and also we monitor it on these units downstairs because these talk to this via Wi-Fi. So these, these, we don't use these much anymore except for downstairs as sort of remote stations of this. Also, uh, on the page that I made, we keep information that I like. GPS speed, your wind speed, time of day. Man, that's important. <laughs> and also, this is um, uh, your, your tracking data. So it tells you your bearing, your distance uh, to destination, your time to your next turn, different things like that. So this is my most useful screen. And it took me a while. I would say playing with it for six months before I finally figured out and became real comfortable on using this unit and getting all the information that I really need on one screen. So under here, um, you can you can look at Active Captain separately, but it's much easier just to use from the chart. But you have to update it once in a while. Nice thing with this unit because it has Wi-Fi built in. Basically, you just download the newest information on your phone. Your phone automatically connects to this unit and updates it. There are two areas for chips here. One's for memory. Um, and the other one was some upgraded maps that we bought that we never ever used. Uh, the only advantage behind the, the upgraded maps is it allows a feature called auto routing. Now if you've ever used Navionics, you know you can put in point A and point B and Navionics will draw a line of safe water, depending on your boat's uh, depth, uh, to that course. Now, it wasn't always perfect. It still isn't always perfect. Uh, for instance, we have a 60-foot mast. Well, it would try to take us underneath bridges with a 14-foot clearance. So, 
this has this extra chip that we purchased was like three hundred dollars um, had a more detailed topographical map and it also then allowed this auto routing feature and to be honest with it you know, I tried it I went no I've never used it since I would much rather prefer now to draw the route by hand on the chart page and it's so easy um, you know like you know this uh, uh, plotting route is just so like you need to add a turn you just hit the button hit add turn and then you know you can adjust and all of a sudden like you just change your route it's that easy to do so um, it does allow you route to uh, also it has the start line if you are racing it has the start line and you can you know measure distances there is actually one page in here just in case you are racing um, so you, you've got you know you've got sailing page you know this can be used for people you know this is your fishing page these are just pre-made pages with useful information that fishermen would use uh, for anchoring you know so uh, this is our anchoring page it shows us where we are it's giving us our wind speed and it's also giving us our radar so um, I don't use these very much like docking you're gonna you know similar screens but um, it's a really handy unit we really like it the problem I found was the information that like the book that came with it almost told you nothing and look trying to find videos online to show you how to do it was difficult and what they did was they put all the um, um, uh, the manual it's in here so in, in, you're like oh, okay yeah it's in here but there's the owner's manual and there's the garment owner's manual and you're like oh open and now it's got a lot and you know da, 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 you know and you're just like uh, pain in the butt so um eh, I know, that's the only criticism i have of it otherwise we love this unit um and it's it's done really well for us um this is under a thousand dollars now um and i think the autopilot was about 5,000. The wind instruments were about 800, and then the Garmin was about another. Two, uh, the radar was about another 2,000. So it wasn't cheap to put it all together, but it's good. Uh, Garmin has honored the warranty. We did have a problem with our original unit uh, when I was in Annapolis. I kept losing uh, GPS signal. We called them. Uh, they immediately uh, emailed us a slip. Uh, to mail the unit back we went to a UPS store mailed the unit back within three days we had a brand new unit in our hands so but kudos to Garmin on their customer service and warranty I was really impressed with it uh, when you're looking at your radar you can do it with uh, just if you just want to look at your radar plainly you know like if you're out in the ocean at night that's all you need okay but I also I always like to have and you can do dual range too so you can have two screens this one's looking up for eighth of a mile or a quarter mile or this one's long range like I could make this one uh, you know so this is looking eight miles out and this one's looking an eighth of a mile out you know uh, as you can see everything those dots are there they're just much much smaller right so that's dual range also you can do an overlay so this is where it takes the chart that, where you are and then overlays the data on top of it very very handy you can turn off uh, there's wave filters and rain filters if you if you turn this thing all the way up it's gonna catch every ripple and every wave out here and your screen just looks a mess so some and, and the nice thing is is you don't have to learn how to do that because they put it they they give you these nice presets so and the preset that comes with it although I've adjusted it some well we're rocking a little bit here this is just weight I mean, look at this, just, wow, poor people in the day, overloaded dinghy over there. Um, so you can adjust the amount of filtering, so if you, there's sea clutter, um, or you can do wave stuff, it's, it's, it's really handy, so there's, there's these presets in here, I should, I should find them just in case somebody's going, yeah, you, you told us about them, where, where are they? Um, radar menu and there's your filters so sea clutter right now is off rain clutter is off and if you could turn them on and then auto high auto medium auto low um, basically uh, I, I, I keep them off unless like I'm out on the ocean 
So radar filters, so I'm gonna keep them off. But you, you know, you can turn them off. Anyway, that's our garment, that's our unit. This is our temporary board that has become somewhat permanent. And, um, you know, everything matches up. She's an old boat, you know, but she does really well for us. And we have been out in some really rough, rough weather. And uh, I can honestly say that uh, she's, she's treated us very, very well. The decks are solid. You feel like this is a solid boat. And uh, that makes me feel good. Although I just didn't notice a problem this morning. I got something I gotta fix. I just lost this. It's still fun. All right, folks, take care. Bye-bye.